My name is Beth Cochran. For those of you all that don't know me, how many of you all, is this your first time being here? Is everybody oldies but goodies? First time? Yay! We're glad you're here. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Greg Ford. He is our worship director here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to kind of just lay this back a little bit, okay? And uh, we're going to review a little bit about what we've talked about so far. And for those of you all that um, maybe your questions haven't been answered, we want to make sure we get those answered tonight if we can. And then Greg's going to share what's been put on his heart for a couple of weeks ago, actually. And I think you guys will be really blessed by that. Um, before we start, let's go to, word in, uh, to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I just want to praise you, Lord, for who you are. God, I love you, and you are worthy of all praise. I thank you, God, that you love us and that you're with us all the time. Lord, even when, even when we can't see you, you're there. So, Father, we just want to come to you tonight. We just ask that your Holy Spirit fill this place. In the name of Jesus, I just rebuke any distractions. There's been a lot of distractions, but we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Jesus, just to fill this place up with you. God, I pray that you open our eyes, open our ears, and give us understanding to what you want us to know tonight. And, Father, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, let's talk a little bit about who we worship. We've talked about that. Who do we worship? God. You either worship one or the other. Who's the other person? Satan. Now, I know when I said that the other week, some of you all are probably going, well, I don't, I'm not a Satan worshiper. That's not what I meant. But anything that's not of God is, is of Satan. Okay? There's only, there's only good and evil. Okay? There's one or the other. Um... Even whenever I was called to be a worship leader when I was sitting out there, one of the things that God told me was, you've worshipped too long at the altar of fear. Now, how many of you all know that fear doesn't come from God? It comes from Satan. That's right. God did not give us a spirit of fear. So forever I was bound in fear and, and helpless to move out of that. So when God spoke that to me, I knew that I had not been worshipped the one true God. I had been allowing fear to hold me down. So we worship God, the Jehovah God, the one that created the world. And how big are we in this world? Remember that Louis Giglio film? Yeah, a golf ball. The size of Texas, 22 inches deep of golf balls. He says, find yourself in that. That's how small we are in comparison. Okay? So we serve a mighty, mighty God. Okay, we talked the, la the other time that I was here, we talked about how we're supposed to worship. There's two things. We're supposed to worship in spirit and truth. What's it mean to worship in spirit? Do what? Holy Spirit, you have to ask God to come into your heart because you cannot worship who you do not know. Okay, if you want to worship God, you've got to ask him into your heart. Truth is what? Are y'all here? <laughs> Are y'all awake? Y'all look really, really gone. <laughs> Truth is sincerity. When we're up here worshiping with all of our heart, with every bit of ounce that we have, and our heart is truly to worship Jehovah God, that's sincerity. So we are to worship in spirit and in truth. Does that make sense? Spirit and in truth. That's the true worshipers. Why do we worship? To give him praise. Why? Huh? To give back to God. Why? Because what? Everything he's done for us. But what if he didn't do anything for us? He still deserves praise. Because why? Because he's God. That's right. Because he was before anything ever was. He was, in the beginning, God. Do you all remember us reading that scripture? In the beginning, God. Nothing else. God. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of forms of worship, and then I'm going to turn it over to Greg. 
You ready? <laughs> He's ready. Okay, they call him Speedy, not because he's fast. <laughs> Just saying. He's really slow. We're going to be here a long time. <laughs> no. Okay, um, there's two forms of worship. One is personal worship, and one is corporate worship. Okay, now when I say personal worship, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Yourself? Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? What's some types of worship that you can do on your own? Pray. A long time with the Lord. What'd you say, Jenna? Read your Bible. Raise your hands. When, yeah, when you're in your own personal time, listen. Hey, some people think that I just raise my hands up here when I'm at home. I raise my hands too. I do a lot of crying, a lot of praying, and sometimes some dancing at my home. Okay? If, if I get happy in the Lord, I don't care. I get in front of the mirror and I just dance and just give him praise. Hey, we got good news about James the other day. My father-in-law that's fighting for his life. He needs a liver and kidneys. Right now he's in ICU. He's been there since October. Now this is a storm we've been in for months, okay? But this is what I know. When people started praying, his body temperature started coming up. Because there is power in prayer. And we serve a God that still heals. Hallelujah. So let me tell you. Let me tell you. That's right. There was some praising going on. There was some shouting and there was some dancing. And I send texts and people send me back, happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. They're all happy. Praise God. Reading your Bible, praying, living a holy life. You know, this is the thing. What, okay, Greg and I as worship leaders and all of our worship team, okay, not just including Greg and I, but all of our worship team, what if we came in on Sunday morning and we praise the Lord with all of our heart, but then... The rest of the week, we lived in sin. Do what? It wouldn't be true worship. That's right. We have to live, our worship is 24-7. And guess what, guys? We fail. We, we do not have it all together. Nobody in this room has it all together. We fail. And, and, and we spend time with the Lord every day. But we still fail. Okay? So we're not asking you to be perfect. We're just asking you to live a holy life. Cut out the stuff that causes death in your life and live life for God, okay? Now, corporate worship is when we come together like this. This is what I get so excited about, like when the praise team was up here a while ago and they were, <laughs> Mission Temple Fire were saying that. I love that song. It's really cool. I just, you know, corporate worship together, yeah. Let's praise the Lord, everybody together. But what, how corporate worship works is if you've had your personal worship during the week. Because if you come just for corporate worship, say you come just for tonight just to get a good feeling, get a good meal, let's listen to a little bit of words and we'll go back home, you're missing it. Because there's more to God than that. He wants you every day. And then when you spend time with Him every day, then when we come together corporately, it explodes. How many of you all were here Sunday morning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we saw a little bit of that. The Holy Spirit fell in this place, and you're like, well, but did you see him? No, we didn't see him, but we felt him. Yeah. And I had prayed, I had prayed through the way, if you want to say something, you just tell me to hush, and I'll let you talk, okay? Does that work? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if Scott I probably say I no. I should have been doing that a long time ago. <laughs> Scott says no. <laughs> but anyway, it was like, you know, the praise team, we were done with our set, mm. and and the a congregation just kept worshiping God. They just kept shouting, clapping, Woo, glory, hallelujah. Well, that wasn't us. That was God. Because they realized, Jehovah God, you are our healer. You are the great I am. We worship you, God, because you're worthy. And, you know, for five minutes it went on, and we were all kind of looking around going, well, what do we do? Yeah, because we, we had no songs. Yeah. Okay? We had, we had done all the songs. And... When the presence of the Lord falls in that way, people get excited. Yeah. And you start seeing uh, God in everybody because people start loving on each other. Uh, they get happy. And it's because God I inhabits the praises of his people. Right. So he's around us all the time. But when you're in praise to him, you can sense it in a different way. Yeah. And we, we had no music. 
So, and the band didn't want to stop, so we just started making up stuff. And that went on for, like she said, about five minutes, and we're going, you know, we were in, we had to change keys twice and get down to something, and then I tried one part of a little song, and then we did something that was original, and it was all praising God. Right. We didn't take that on ourselves as any kind of praise that, hey, the music was good today, right. or right. anything other than, we don't want to stop, so That's we've right. got to do something. That's right. Whatever it means. If we get embarrassed because we play something wrong, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're going to praise God with all we have. So yeah. it was a powerful time. It was powerful, yeah. And, and I love those times like that. Uh, when we come together corporately, you know, that's, that's our prayer all the time, that worship just explodes, okay, out of what you've experienced with him all week long. But another form of worship is tithing. You know, Brian preached on that Sunday. Probably a lot of people got mad about that, but truth is truth. God says that if you don't tithe, you're robbing from him. Malachi chapter 3. But God also says that if you're obedient in tithing, he says, test me in this and I'll open my floodgates. Anybody in this room, I don't care if you're 16, 15, 14, if you've got a job, you should be tithing 10% of your paycheck off of the gross. Not off of the net, off of the gross. Now you say, what's gross and net? Gross is what you make. Because God got a hold of me and Scott years ago. And he said, I need your tithe. I, I want you to tithe. Well, okay, off the net. So we gave him off the net. Well, then about a year or two later, he, or no, it wasn't even a year. It's probably a couple months. He came back and he said, I want off the top. And I was, I was sitting there doing the bills going, but God, you know what? We don't bring this home. Like he knew that. I mean, like he didn't know that. And I'm like, uh, we're not going to have enough money for groceries by the time. But this is what happened. When we stepped out in obedience and began to tithe, this is no joke. I'm not kidding. Groceries were left on our doorstep. Because literally, we tithed our grocery money. We didn't, have, we, didn't, we didn't have any money, literally. We had so much debt, we didn't have any money, which is wrong. Don't get into debt. Don't pay cash for things. Don't go into debt. And literally, God, because of the obedience and tithing, we did not know who put groceries on our front step. We never went hungry. We had money left in our mailbox. Didn't have a clue where it came from. God provided. Because his word says, test me in this and I'll prove it. So if you got a job, start tithing. I guarantee you he'll bless you. Corporate worship, we sing, we dance, we raise our hands, we do some shouting. Sometimes God says, be still in corporate worship. Sometimes he says, be still and get on your face or just be still and listen to me. Uh, praying, can you think of anything else? Corporate worship, coming together? Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to take just a couple of questions because I want Greg to have enough time to share what's on his heart and then if we have time after that, we want to take more questions. Um, so... Guess anybody got a question? <laughs> and if you don't want to ask, go ahead. Yeah. I think God just really Yeah. You want to answer that? Kind of like what you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He, he said he thought that's what happened Sunday, that, you know, God's presence was felt by everybody here. And, and I think that goes back to what I was talking about as we praise him, that we just get a sense of his presence even th that much more. So if you're not engaged in that, you know, if, you, if you're not in praise, you might go, I don't, I don't understand this. What's going on with all these people? You know, why are they so happy? Why do they have their hands raised? Why are they crying? Some people are laughing. I don't get it. It's because that, that they're not engaged in, in praising and worshiping the Lord. So they don't sense his presence. And I'm sure that you have experienced that in the last few weeks. If you've been here, you go, I don't, I don't really understand what they're talking about. Um, until, until you've made that decision that Christ is your Lord and Savior, and then you in, in, enter into worship, you, you really won't understand that. Okay, yes. How much money should you tithe off your paycheck? Yes, 10% off of the top. Now, that's what I say off the top now. Um, that's your first fruits. That's exactly what we celebrated the 1st of January. Off the top is your first, what God gives you. 
So if you make $500, $50 is going to be your tithe. And when we very first started write, writing our tithe check, I would look at it and go, oh, my gosh, you know, that's a lot of money. We could, uh, you know, we could do this. But you know what? It ain't that no more. It's God's. I don't even look at it. It's the first check wrote. Yeah, you get a tax deduction as of right now for it. <laughs> Who knows what happened later. Go ahead. Do you want to tithe means tenth. That's what tithe means. Offering would be anything above that. Yep. Well, the chest would be an offering. He's asking, do we do a tithe every Sunday? Is that what you're asking? Yes. When we take up, when they take up the offering, that is that is when you pay your tithes. Or you pay them in Sunday school class. Um, now, if God tells you to give above 10%, say you, your tithe was 50, if he says, I need you, I, you, know, you felt on your heart you needed to give above, that's an offering. Does that make sense? Yes. But a tithe is, that's what God says, if you don't give it to him, you're robbing him. And you'll see it in your life. True. He, he was saying some people don't tithe because they don't trust the church to do with their money what they say they're going to do. Well, do you want to say anything to that? Well, there's a, mil a million reasons not to tithe. There's only one reason to tithe. Yeah. And, and that's because he is Lord in your life and, and that you want to do that, yeah. uh, putting him first in everything. It, it's something you, you have to grow into. It's not easy. I'm not going to tell you it is. And I, and the, um, actually, probably the more majority of the church doesn't do it. And it's because they haven't been taught some of the things you're being taught. Yes. Praise God. That's right. Amen. That's right. And you know, we're we're really stuck on the tithe here, and I think and I'm, and you all have great questions. Tithing is really a condition of your heart. It really is. Because if you truly want to worship the Lord, you're gonna tithe. It's a heart issue. It really is, and an obedience. Most people that have like the money to tithe, they say tithe is mandatory, but sometimes people they come to church and they're like, "Well, I don't have this money, so I'm not going to tithe today." And then they go out and they buy like loads of money and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, God, what what He was saying was they didn't tithe; they used it for other things, the wrong things. Everything that we have has been given to us by God. Everything. Your clothes, your shoes, your health, your friends, your family, the milk in your refrigerator, the bread on your table, everything has been given to you by God. It's His. Basically, He allows us to steward it, do you, be stewards of it. Do you know what a steward is? Huh? We, we, yeah, it's not ours. It's His. We're just managing it for Him. That's what it, that's stewardship is managing God's money, okay? So basically, that's what we're doing. And all He says, "I'm giving you all of it. 
All I want back is a 10. That's all he said. Okay, any other questions about worship before we go on? Okay. You're welcome. Age the Lord. No, it's all good. No. Well, just to give you some insight into how God works for some of you, maybe that haven't had a lot of experience since you've made a decision of how God works in your life. And since both of us are up here, let's just talk about when God called you to be a worship leader. And This may sound strange to some of you, but I knew that I knew that Beth was supposed to lead worship, that that she was supposed to lead worship. And I had a specific thing in mind that she was supposed to lead worship over because we were starting a youth ministry next door and we were going to have another praise team over there. And I thought, well, uh, that's what the Lord wants her to do. And I really felt that powerfully. But I wasn't supposed to say anything yet. It's like every time I would think about maybe I need to say something to her, um, the Lord would just, no, Holy Spirit would stop me. And the same time, Beth was going through, tell them what you were going through. I was going through, God was, um, God was calling me, and I knew it, but I, I was going through a time of, I guess restoration coming out of the church that we just came from. I was trying to clear my mind. I had a lot of fear, a lot of fear. And, um, but the day that God called me, um, (laughs) Greg come back and asked me, Scott's like, she's all tore up. (laughs) She's all tore up. God's done spoke because we come to the altar and, you know, and Greg came back there and asked me and he said, what's God called you to do? Well, I didn't want to tell him. He's the worship leader. I mean, how, how would you tell the worship leader? Well, God's called me to lead worship. You know, I just, I didn't feel like I, I was like, and he asked me three times. He said, what's God called you to do? I say, I ain't telling you. And then he said, what has he called you to do? And I said, he's called me to lead worship. And he said, I think you said I knew it or something. I, well, the whole, God told me. the whole time I was asking him, he, uh, what? The Lord was telling her, he was telling me, ask her, ask her, (laughs) (laughs) ask her if he's called her to be a worship leader. So it's kind of eerie in a way because you don't know how to take that, you know, you just feel this overwhelming urgency to do or not to do things and so he was working on us both at the same time because she felt uneasy asking the worship leader, like, I'm going to take your place. You yeah. know, God's told me to take your spot, so yeah. get out of the way. And at the same time, he was telling me that she's supposed to be a worship leader. So what's happened in that process, as she said yes, uh, he's allowed it to be a um, uh, a mentoring thing with mm-hmm. us. So yep. because I've been doing this for 14 years, and I've gone through a lot. Yeah. And so I can say this is what, what God taught me during that time, and yeah. it's it's helped her to do that. So, yes, it is hard. It is hard because when he called her and when he called me, I had no idea what it was about. Uh, I had played music in bars for 20 years and loved music and didn't really want to give it up for the church music because it was pretty lame, to be honest with you. (laughs) And uh, I went on an Emmaus walk and... During the worship time, Scott actually was playing guitar with a good friend of mine, Tim Richardson. And God told me, I want you to do that. And I was I was just kind of blown away, but I knew in my spirit that that's what he wanted me to do. So I came away from that weekend knowing that, that, that I, I had to find some way to do it. 
And the first time I got up to tell about my weekend, which I give that give you that opportunity after you go on a, a walk, I got up to just tell about my weekend, and I was so nervous that my lips started going up toward my eye, <laughs> and I, f I thought this I look like Elvis up here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I thought, Lord, you know, how can I lead worship when I can't even talk in front of people? So that began the process, and slowly, slowly, he kept chopping away at all those little blocks I'd come up with, and I started digging in, learning how to play the music, and uh, still played in a band for about a year, or about three years after that, actually. A year after I started here, I played in a rock band on weekends. Um, but eventually, God said, this is not what I want you to do. You know, I wasn't doing anything bad. I was just playing music because I love music. Uh, he ended up not taking away anything from me but giving me more right. uh, than I ever you. surrendered to him. Yeah. And that's the way he, he works. That's the way he operates. Yeah, that's right. With yes, and I had that written down. easy but miserable yeah. you know but the first thing you do as a christian is obey right because when you feel that call for the decision you've got a choice you either obey or you disobey yeah. right yeah. and it never stops that's right it never stops it never stops yeah. that's right that's right misery exactly And that goes for anything that God's calling you all to do. I know there's been a couple in here that's been called to be a missionary. Listen, when, when I don't know how it was for Greg, but I know for me, when I was, I was called, the road wasn't easy at first. And there was one night I left here mad. I was mad. I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing this. You can forget it. I was driving home. I was so mad. And, um, which Greg didn't even know I was mad. But anyway... I wasn't mad at him. Oh, actually, I think I was. Anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But anyway, um, but then it was like, what am I going to do? If God's called you to preach, Donnie Bird, and you get mad and say, I ain't doing it, what are you going to do? You ha if you've been called, you can't walk away from it. If you do, you're going to be miserable. You are going to be miserable. So, you know, you just push through those things, whatever God's called you to do, you just push through and you keep praising him and you keep, yeah, that's right. You got another question? That's all good. You get that. That's right. 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 That's true. Right. 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 
Exactly. If they're flipping hamburgers at McDonald's, wherever they're supposed to be, that they're supposed to be obedient and and be yeah. Coach, we're going to get to you, and then we're going to get to Chris. You ever been called to supper? <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing. Well, it's the same thing as any other calling. You know, hey, Wood, it's time to come eat. You know, uh, the Lord does it in the same way, but it's a deep spiritual way. And that's one of the things uh, I was going to talk to you tonight about is that when you're called, there won't be any question. There won't be any doubt in your mind or in your spirit because it's so powerful. It's like nothing you've ever experienced before. And if it's not that, it's probably not a calling. If you just think, well, my buddies went up, maybe I need to go up too. And, you know, everybody else is doing it. So, And I know you've been told that a million times. But it's the truth. When, when God calls you uh, to be his child, it's time. You'll know it. You'll have to fight not to do it. And I've been there and done that too. You'll be miserable. Mm -hmm. It's always a friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Definite answer. Calling is a definite answer. Yeah, Greg and I wasn't going, well, is he calling me to be a pastor or a worship leader or a Sunday school teacher? No, we knew it was worship leader. We knew that. It was very distinctive. We knew. Greg, does he have time to share, Daniel? Okay. Oh, Jenna. Okay, real quick. I, I Jenna. think sometimes, you know, I think, like I know that sometimes if God has called you, That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's good. Y'all had good questions. And if you all have different questions or something, please write them down. Give them to us because we want them. Okay? All right. Greg is going to. Oh. Okay. Good. Cool, you have to tell Daniel that. He might up there, yeah, share that with him. That's a good idea. Okay, Greg, we're going to turn the floor over to him because he's got something on his heart to share with you guys. <clears throat> okay, guys, you're going to. We're going to have time to take up any more questions, Daniel. You think, if we go on with basket? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm. You know me, don't you? Hi, Daniel. I'm nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> they call him Speedy. <laughs> well, this is this is one of my least favorite things to do is to get up and talk in front of, front of others. Um, I'll try not to do the Elvis lip or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> uh, but.
But I, I do want to thank you all for your honesty with your questions that you've written down already. It, it was a it was a big eye opener to us to see exactly where you're at. And to be honest with you, we have a wide spectrum. We've got we've got a wide spectrum of, of where everyone in here is uh, in their understanding of worship. So some of the things we've gone over, uh, Beth has gone over and Daniel's gone over, maybe they've been a little over your head. That's, that's for some other people. Maybe they've been a little too simple for you. Um, that's for that's other, people, other people. Okay. So we're trying to catch a, a, a big variety of things here, but I do want to thank you for um, what you've shared already. And, and I know that at your age, you're just tired of everywhere you go, you've got somebody telling you what to do, how to do it, and then after you've done it, they say you've done it wrong. But that's not what I'm here to talk about tonight. I'm not here to do that. I guess um, one thing I wanted to share with you is um, you've been blessed to have this worship series. In the past few weeks that you've been here, You've been taught more on worship than I've heard from the pulpit my entire life. Because churches do not do that. They do not take the time to teach people why, how, uh, who. You know, they, they talk around it all the time. And you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. But you've been given a special treat. And if you will take that and apply it to your life, you're going to have incredible power because the power is in the spirit world. It's not in the physical world. That's right. But let me tell you how that, that spills over. And this was something that, that I read this week. I actually heard T.D. Jakes talking about it. And he was talking about uh, Paul and Silas, and they were preaching. And I'm just going to paraphrase this because we don't have a lot of time. But they were traveling around um, preaching everywhere, and this – girl was following them and she had a spirit of divina di divination, divination. I think it was, at which she could tell the future and the reason she could tell the future is because she had a demon on her okay so she could see what was going to happen and these guys were basically making money off of her yeah. because if you wanted to go see her and learn about the future you had to pay them right. well she was following them around day after day after day and I wanted to get this exactly what she says. She says, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Day after day, hour after hour. She would cry that out to them. Well, Paul gets tired of it. And that's what it says in there. He gets fed up with her. So he turns around and says, demon, come out of her. And it does. So they're, these guys are mad now, okay? Because they've lost their cash cow. Yeah. She can't do that anymore. The demon has come out, okay? They get mad, go to the magistrates, and have them thrown into prison. And it says in the innermost part of the prison. And back then, if you were thrown into prison, the guard that was responsible for you, if you escaped, they killed him. So he was in there with them. <laughs> wow. He wasn't taking any chances, okay? <laughs> so here they are. They're in the innermost part of the prison. They've got shackles on their hands and on their feet. What do they do? You can't keep a worshiper down. That's right. They start praying and singing hymns. That's right. They're worshiping. Yeah. And it says the prisoners were listening to them. And the next thing God did was an earthquake came. The doors flew open <laughs> and the shackles fell off Hallelujah. of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, the guard wakes up. He sees this. He runs in, runs over there immediately with his lamp. He sees them sitting there. They say, hey, we're still here. And you think, well, that's crazy. The Lord did all this. Shackles fell off. Why didn't they... Bat out the door, you know, they're free. Yeah. It was There was a reason in it. That guard saw that they were still there, fell down and said, how can I have salvation? <laughs> Hallelujah. They took Hallelujah. an axe. They took him home. Uh, he took them to their house and their whole house was saved. That's, amazing. That's good. That's good. 
So the reason I say that to you is at your age you may feel powerless. But if you will understand this worship, if you will accept Christ as your Savior and apply worship to your life, you have unending, unending power through the Lord. And the other thing I wanted to talk about, I really, really hadn't planned to, to spend much time on that because um, I just wanted to tell you that you're already worshipers. Right now, you're, you're all worshipers. The thing is, at your age, you worship yourself. Because you're all you think about. If you have money, you spend it on yourself. If you have any time, you do what you're wanting to do. So you're already worshiping. You're just worshiping yourself. And remember what we said, anything other than the worship of God goes back to who are you worshiping. The absence of God is hell. Right. So if you're worshiping anything else, you're on the wrong track. But you are right where you're supposed to be at your age. And that may be hard to, to understand when you've got people telling you you need to do better. You can do more. Or you need to do this and not that. That's all true. And you need to strive to be the best you can be. Stay away from the things that kill you and destroy your life. But at your age... God is already working in your life or where you're at right now. And I know that's hard to see because you can't see it when you're in it. Right. You're going to be able to look back in a few years and see it. But I can prove to you right now that God is real. You just look around here at all the people that don't have to be here tonight. All these people that are serving you, all these adults here, they don't have to be here. Do you think they don't have anything better to do? They do. They could be at home doing whatever they please. But God has put them here to serve you. And through serving you, they serve him. Okay. Now, how much time do I have, Daniel? Okay. I just want to tell you something briefly. When I was your age, I went to church for all the wrong reasons, just like you're here tonight for all the wrong reasons. You're here because your parents are working tonight. Uh, they're here working, serving. Or you're here because your buddies are here. You just wanted to play some basketball, eat some food. Uh, hang out with your friends. I went to church when I was around the age of 13. I had gone some when I was younger, but I didn't really go regularly. But I went for girls. <laughs> because I had a best friend that kept saying, you know, these girls are at church, you know, you need to come. And I thought, hey, that sounds like a good idea. But guys, let me tell you, you don't want a friend like I had, okay? <laughs> because he was... Um, Blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, good-looking kid, okay? So every time we ran into girls, who do you think they wanted? <laughs> right? <That's> so, <funny>. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to pick your friends, okay? You know? <laughs> but anyway, the first, uh, I met someone through this other girl that I was, you know, wanting to go out with. Because her friend needed to learn how to skate. 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 Yeah. So we went to the skating rink, you know, and I was hanging out with her, you know, but she was hanging out with somebody else. So as soon as he got off the bus, I really turned on the charm, okay? <laughs> and about a year, year and a half later, our second time we were together on a date was a hayride with the church. Okay, I've been with that, that girl now 31 years. Yeah.
So let me tell you, God is working right now in ways that you cannot understand. But you're all maturing. And if you don't believe that, think of who you were two years ago. So just be open to, to how God's working in your life. And when I was going to church, I was going for the girls, going for the wrong reason. I was 13. I was lost as I could be. They were having a revival. And I remember that call that we just talked about. When God, when it, was, it was October the 22nd, 1974. And I'm, I'm standing there, they're holding the revival over just for me, okay? Because they can see me back there, and they, they've seen the look before, okay? I'm there on my aisle by myself, and I'm gripping that pew, and I could not step out into that aisle. So I went home miserable. And I was so nervous, I remember asking my dad the next day, because I knew I, if that night I had to go back and make the right decision. I was so nervous when I asked him, I said, how will I know when I'm supposed to be crucified? And he laughed, and I felt stupid. <laughs> but he said, you'll know when you know. And I thought, what a lame answer. <laughs> but it was so true. Both statements were so true. Wow. Because I did know the night before that I knew that I was supposed to go. And when you make that decision, you are crucified. That's right. You're crucified in Christ. Wow. Yeah. And guys, I know we don't have much time right now, but this is something that's been laid on my heart. So I'm going to ask everybody to bow their head right now. Every adult, everyone in the building, I want you to bow your head right now. And some of you may have that feeling tonight that you just know God is stirring in your heart and this is your appointed time. You don't have to leave here miserable. If tonight is your night to make that decision to become a true worshiper for the rest of your life, I want you to be able to do that tonight. So my question to you right now are you feeling that? And if you are, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand. Nobody's looking. Nobody's going to see you but me. If God is stirring in your heart in that way tonight, just slip your hand up so we can see it. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to say this prayer. And for those of you who raised your hand, I want you to say it with me. And if you didn't raise your hand, but you still feel that way, feel free to say, Lord, I know that I am a sinner. And Father, I feel you tugging at my heart tonight. I know that this is a divine appointment with you, Lord. I want to ask you into my heart, Lord. I want you to rule over the rest of my life. I want to be a true worshiper. I want to worship in spirit and truth. So, Father, forgive me of my sins and lead my way. Amen.